Ali here. I am back to talk about all things natural holistic remedies. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I thought I'd do this video for the moms out there who are expecting, as you all know, I am expecting on my, I'm on my fifth child um, and I'm a naturalist home birthing mom. And so I thought I'd talk about um, what it looks like when you're in your third trimester. That's the, you know, that's the end of your pregnancy cycle. That's when you're starting to prepare your home and your space for bringing this new life into the world. So um, I thought I'd go over what I like to call my education packet for the third trimester. So usually around the 36th week, um, it's, this is important because that's when you'll discuss with your midwife what you're going to bring and how you're going to prepare for your birthing experience. So all who will be at your birth should attend your 36 week appointment. So all the various roles can be discussed, you know, that being the midwife, your doula, your spouse, your sister, sister-in-law, you know, in-laws, whomever that you want to be a part of that experience. And so they can be there in your home or at the birth facility to take a tour and know where everything is and how they can best support you during that experience. And then um, usually they'll kind of do a like a mock role play thing, just a short presentation. Uh, the midwife will do for you in your home or at a birth center on what to do if your baby is before born before you get to the center or if before the midwife arrives at at your home, you know, and you end up having to possibly do an unex unassisted birth. So um, this is a subject that I think all women should be educated about because, you know, births, they do come very fast and that does happen from time to time. However, it's rare. So um, it's really important that your doula is at your 36 week appointment if you choose to have one. So that way she can be there to support you um, in the event that for some reason your midwife is not there. No, they're not midwives. They haven't gone to midwifery school, but they are educated in birth in a general sense. Um, doulas are really there for more of a physical and emotional support. Uh, and so that's why some people choose to have them. Some choose not. Like I said, um, I've had four births so far. I've had doulas at two of my births and two I didn't. I was supposed to have one, but again, um, it was a situation where, like I just said, sometimes births are very fast. With my daughter, that was my third pregnancy, I went into labor, had started having contractions. So my husband uh, called the midwife and let her know, hey, you know, it's happening. So we already knew the drill. We've done this twice before. So we're timing the contractions. And I didn't even see my mid midwife's face. Like they started coming intense, intense. I was in labor for only an hour. Like literally when she got here, I didn't have to have an unassisted birth. She made it. But um, when she got here, I was like on all fours with my face in the bed, like in a pillow, just like, breathing, doing my Hatha breathing in for four, out for seven, but you'll start to get a rhythm because these contractions have a rhythm. So if you breathe with them, it makes it more um, palatable. You're able to just get through that naturally. So I, she came, I remember hearing her voice, didn't, again, didn't see her face. So I'm like bent over and I hear her and she's like, okay you are like super dilated we pretty much need to you know listen to your body you start pushing when you when you, <laughs> it was that time so she was pretty much there to walk me through pushing going through the ring of fire experience and uh, getting that head out and then she was out I mean an hour she and it's so funny because her personality is like this now you know she just made a decision like all right I'm ready to come into the world uh and I don't have time for all this processes and taking you know four hours and trying to wiggle through let's get to let's get to it she took an hour and it's like she has been rushing through life ever since I'm like slow down child but that's just it's her personality she's like let's get it let's get it 
I'm like, I don't know what kind of adult you are going to be, but you're going to be a little firecracker. I tell you that. But um, and I mentioned the ring of fire. If you all haven't heard of that common term, it's basically when the head, <laughs> the labor pains are like menstrual cramps, like really, really excruciatingly strong menstrual cramps. But I think the most uncomfortable part of birthing is getting the head out. It's the biggest part of the body. And it's like you're you have to expand and you feel you feel this pulling, you know, this pushing moving through you. And yeah, it's like a friction. It is a friction. I mean, thank goodness it's a, a moisture happening, but it is a fixture and it burns. It's almost like you know, this rubbing, rub as hard as you can and rub some more to just, so if you've ever had any kind of like a rug burn or anything, just imagine that. So it, it feels like heat. <laughs> it feels like heat. Um, and then, but once you get that out, um, sometimes you're just sitting there and the baby's just kind of, you know, hanging out until you've got that energy and that wind and you feel that urge to push. And then you just, the rest just like, whoop. They just come on out. So you can do this. You can do this. Again, I, um, I've mentioned before, it's a ment having this mental clarity, having a picture, visualizing, and just knowing that we've all had painful experiences in life. You know, you fell off your bike when you were little, or you skinned your knee. I mean, the worst <laughs> pain that you've had. You can get through it. And even though I, I, before I started having children, people say, oh, you know, yeah. It hurts, but after that baby's born, you know, you forget. No, I have not forgotten. Like, I'm mentally preparing for this fifth one. I'm just kind of like, okay, yeah, I've already done this. I'm just going to breathe through it. I got this. I got this because I've done it four times and I've made it to the other side. So, obviously, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. So back to preparing at the 36-week at mark. So what's happening? So you're going to prepare yourself and your household um, basically about four weeks before you're due. Um, typically, people birth in the hospital 36, 37 weeks. They, there's a lot of inductions going on uh, where the state that I'm in right now, that's pretty much this post-COVID, you know, the virus thing. Um I guess for precautions, they're they're wanting to just induce people. It's just become a habit. Um, but when you home birth or you're birthing with a midwife at a birth center, that generally doesn't happen. They let your body take its course unless there's something that's preventing you from um, going completely full term. I carried all my children 41, 42 weeks. So just, you know, ticking around. So um, good planning and preparation are always essential if you have um, a calm demeanor and a good atmosphere uh, for birth, you, you'll be fine. So there's some things that I can tip, you know, tips and tricks that I can provide to you to help you ensure that you're organized. You know, you want to have a prepared list of things that you want to take care of before you're due to have your baby. And just remember that babies can come as early as 37 weeks and be born at a birth center. Or at home. So it's okay if you go. I think my daughter was born at 37, 38. She's the only one. The boys, they were all 41, 42 weeks. But again, you know, she was like, I'm ready to get earthside and get this party started. So first thing you want to do if you're going to a birth center is pack a, pack a bag. Um, you want to pack changes of clothes, some personal items. Uh, for the baby, obviously some onesies. If this is your first baby, I know you're like, oh, I need all this stuff. Really, you really, you're going to realize, like, only thing you need, you need a onesie. You need a hat for the baby's head. You need some um, cotton flannel blankets to wrap the baby in, some diapers, um, bring your insurance cards, um, telephone numbers, a writing pad. Since I birthed at home, what I like to, but you can put it in your bag for the birth center as well. I will get on Word or what my Google Docs and make out a list. And it's like, okay, here's my mother's number, father's number, uh, godparents, you know, auntie, sister, all the pertinent people that you want 
your significant other or family member or whomever is with you to make sure they call to let them know like okay the baby's here um let's see what else make sure you have an infant car seat because you obviously need to take the baby home from the birth center and obviously don't forget your camera uh, some people they hire professional videographers to be at their births um i've never done that i'm considering it because i'm feeling like five is enough <laughs> so maybe i want to do that um but i do have video footage either my husband was recording or my children have been at my birth so they it's so funny i have them on i can see them after the fact my doula did videos last time um and my daughter she's all it, it was yeah her face she's just like oh my god yeah but they've all been here and i think it's really good for them to see it and understand that this is just nature this is how life is brought into the world there's nothing like icky about it and you know it's a little bloody but you know it's all good. So bring your camera. Um, any special kind of music that you want to hear now, just make sure your phone is with you and you got your playlist that you put together on Spotify or your Apple Music or whatever. Uh, because I'm at home, I have Alexa. So I'm pretty much like, Alexa, play me some. I think I birthed a tribe called Quest last time. Um, but you know, right now I'm feeling green tea pink. So, you know, maybe she'll be my my mood. So we'll just see. So in my space, I make sure I have a pink salt candle because that helps uh, just um, remove any kind of negative energies in the space. A soft candle. I like um, lavender incense. It's not lavender. Really, I don't like incense. Excuse me. Lavender essential oil. So I have my diffuser going and I might burn a little bergamot or some lavender i like rose as well something not too strong when i'm pregnant like scents really yeah they bother me so i don't like to like have too much going on um i'll make sure like my arnica oil is on the bedside because i'm going to need that immediately arnica helps with bruises and swelling so have that on hand your doula can give you a nice rub down while you're in labor just soothing your back or your shoulders uh but that changes like with my second son i thought i wanted to have a water birth so here we go with the tub fill it up i'm sitting in there my son's like feeding me strawberries he was too feeding me strawberries and putting hot wheels in the tub and i was like oh you know what i'm just hot like i need to move around i, I can't i can't sit here i don't know how people birth just sit there in the birth tub like i need to move so i walk around the living room i walk the hallways i um i did lay in the bathtub i just wanted some cooler water because when i'm laboring my body gets really hot i just feel hot so i know in the hospital you can't rock around butt naked but in my house i can so and i'm pregnant and it's all women here other than my husband so i mean my children they're little though so um yeah so if i want to strip i'm stripping i can do that because i'm in my home so um but yeah, I could I could not do the water birth. So shout out to you if you can just sit there and be still and have this whole relaxing in the water experience. But um, you definitely want to have some herbal tinctures for afterbirth pains. Yeah, so the cramping doesn't go away after you have the baby. So once you birth the baby and then you birth the placenta, because yeah, that comes next. You have to push the placenta out too, but it's not. It's a little cramping and then you'll know your body will tell you like okay i need to go ahead and push this out but um afterwards for a maybe about two three days it lessens each day but you're still feeling these uterine contractions and that's your uterus like all that extra blood and fluid is coming out that's why you have the whole postpartum kit and you have to wear the the undergarments because you're going to be bleeding but all that excess blood is moving but also your uterus is starting to move back it's shrinking and it's moving back into the proper location where it should be so it'll contract so you want to have this tincture there's some different types of herbs that you can use for that um some is mother i usually use motherwort wart there's a black cohosh um let me see let me see let me see um i think i might have some listed here in my note for you guys yeah because I've, I've used so many different ones yeah cramp bark i've used cramp bark yeah the motherwort black cohosh 
Um, there's something called Lobelia. I've never used that herb, and that's a Helianus viburnum. Yeah, so I'm like, let me get stuff that I can pronounce and I'm familiar with. So the black cohosh, the cramp bark, the motherwort, they work. You can either get them in a natural food store separately, or you can actually, if you just like Google after ease, herbal tincture, you know, postpartum birth, and that just helps with the healing process. And also uh, your midwife, she will massage your belly in a... Let me think, is it counterclockwise or clockwise? From I'm, I'm sitting here rubbing my belly. So I'm trying to remember. Um, I guess that would be in a clockwise motion this way. Yeah, a clockwise motion is just helping to kind of move it along, get it back in its place. And as she's coming over, checking you every few hours um, right after the birth, but also every day when she's coming, she's doing that massage, just feeling to make sure all that fluid, there's no pockets of fluid. Everything's kind of moving to where it needs to be. Um, and then again, that cramping lessens up day after day after day. So like, I still have a tincture from my last birth and I'm just gonna use the rest of this one. Maybe I'll buy an another one just in case. I need to check and see how much I have left that I think if it'll get me through that time or if I just need to have some extra on hand. But um, also you want to have, I make my own diaper cream, so um, I'll mix that together, make sure that I have that on hand. So once the baby's come out and we've wiped him or her all up and dressed her, you know, just a little moisture on the little booty. Um, and then also anything that replenishes electrolytes, because it's like you've been working out, like a gym workout. Like I said, I'm, I start sweating and man, your body goes through it. So I generally will have a lot of coconut water because it's natural and it's full of electrolytes. So I'll replenish with that. Some people use like recharge or emergency. Um, even uh, what else is really good for hydration? Uh, watermelon water. I really am into watermelon water now. So you can, it's, it's pricey. Um, they sell it at Whole Foods. You can sometimes get it at grocery outlet and different places. You can probably order it on Amazon. But I have a juicer. I like to juice. What I'll do is sometimes I'll just buy a whole watermelon, slice it up, slap it in the juicer, and bam, I mean, watermelon water. So coconut or watermelon water are my go-tos for a natural drink. Uh, I guess you could have Gatorade. You know, um, and then, of course, pack yourself some food or make sure somebody knows what you want off a of DoorDash or, you know, if you have some family or friends that are going to be bringing you food that it's there because once you've gotten yourself cleaned up, bathed and changed your sheets and all that good stuff and um, the baby, you have the baby, um, you're going to feel hungry. You're, I mean, you again, it's like you've had a full on workout. So, you know, make sure you have something to recharge your body, um, you know, some type of protein. I'm a vegan. Uh, I've had, like, my doula, she's made food for me. They brought me, like, you know, vegan sushi rolls or a lentil soup or um, I did a bunch of postpartum freezer meals before I had the baby because my husband does not cook. I've spoiled him. Um so I froze a bunch of stuff. So he knew just to, you know, make sure something was thawed and ready to go for that day, for the next few days. And so, yeah, but just make sure that you have some food and good stuff like that. Um, post all your telephone numbers of your midwife in places where you can find them in your home. So that way, once you go into labor, if your spouse or whomever you're with needs to say, hey, <laughs> alerting you. I think it's about that time. Um, and something else you want to have postpartum is your sits bath. So you can buy this like toilet seat thing. It's what it looks like. And you fill it up with some warm water and herbs and you sit it. And it's basically to soothe your perineum and all those woman parts that have been very active. Um, I make mine. I don't buy the mix, but you can just look for a postpartum herbal kit on Amazon or at a natural food store or, yeah, pretty much anything 
any birthing, even a place that you purchase your birth kit from, you can get that there as well. Um, but my mix consists of some comfrey leaf, salt, sage, lavender, calendula, uva ursa, some plantain leaf. I live like literally I can walk to a natural food store. So I walk up there and I'll just get all the herbs and I put them in a big mason jar and they're all mixed up and ready to go. And then when I'm in labor, my husband will get that tall jar, dump it in a big tall stock pot, fill it up with water and boil it. And he'll boil it for I think it's about 45 minutes. I think that's how long I usually tell him. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then after that, we'll let it cool out. He'll strain it put it in another jar and then I'll put it in a peri bottle. So instead of sitting in that toilet seat, because what I found is you can put those herbs also in like your bath water and just kind of sit in the bathtub. But if you want to heal and kind of heal quickly, I, what I found is every time I needed to go to the restroom after I use the restroom, I would have him get some, fill it up in the peri bottle and it's cold because it's been sitting in the refrigerator. So it's really soothing and after I use the bathroom and clean then I'll just spray the bottle and just kind of like give myself a wash and just do that every time you use the bathroom and you use it all up and you'll be done in like maybe four days four days after birth yeah yeah so those are the things that you need to do try to arrange your life the best that you can you know you generally something called nesting starts to occur where you're just like okay I need to start cleaning out stuff and you all of a sudden want to throw things away oh, I need new bed sheets or you might want to buy a new like right now I mean I'm kind of early but I'm already I, my body is just already in the mode so I'm already like nesting where I want to get a new bed I might literally buy a new bed before the baby's born and like <laughs> I, yeah I'm just going through it so um yeah make sure you stock up again stock up on your food at home um try to keep your laundry caught up because that's just things that you're not going to be thinking about and then if you have a home birth it's going to be a little more stuff because you're gonna you know have she yeah like i always just get some cheap sheets from ross or marshall's or somewhere and a um cheap shower curtain from the dollar store to cvs or somewhere because you want to lot what you do is you line your bed with the plastic um shower curtain so that way you don't bleed through it then you just put cheap sheets on top of it, and those are the ones that you can labor in if you choose to labor in the bed i've labored in the bed i've birthed in my bed i've birthed on the floor i've birthed on my sofa so it's just again i move around so it just kind of depends on what position that i'm feeling when i have the child so but again you're going to be you know hey you have afterbirth and different things going on so you don't want to leak on your on your comforter or your good sheets or have those stains on your mattress so that's how you protect it from that it's real simple it's not like anything high tech um if you want to have someone help you out i have someone that comes and cleans my home anyway for like every every month i really need her to come like every two weeks which <laughs> but as we're getting close to the baby so it's just like you know make sure that you kind of have that schedule so you don't feel like God, everything's piling up because you have this new baby and your body is tired and you need to rest. So you shouldn't be thinking about doing laundry and cooking and, you know, having to clean up and all that stuff. So if you can accommodate financially and do those things, definitely incorporate that or have someone close to you, you know, your friends and family who understand or say, you know, I'm coming over, I'm going to wash your dishes today. You know, little things. Little things. People need to remember, you know, the mom, it's not just about the baby. You really need support, too. That's what helps a lot with postpartum. Um, You want to have some gowns. I like this kit from um, Free to Baby. I'm going to get it this time. I usually, like, pick and choose everything separate. But, you know, they made it very efficient. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get this Frida Baby kit this time. And that's going to take care of like the gowns and the period bottles. Oh, so you might have hemorrhoids. So the natural way of getting rid of that is actually witch hazel. So generally I have a bottle of witch hazel. I will douse it with um, onto some cotton balls so every time I, after I do my peri bottle, after I use the restroom, then I would just take those cotton balls and hold it there and that shrinks them. But in the Frida Baby kit, they now have this, it's basically witch hazel in a foam in a bottle. So I'm like, well, okay, I'll get that or some wipes, you know. Um, preparation, I don't use chemicals, so I don't use preparation H, but that'll, that'll do it too. 
So, but you might not, I think it might have some alcohol in it. So you might not want to do that, which hazel doesn't burn. So that's always really good. And then also uh, start looking for a pediatrician. Um, if you have a boy, make sure that they do circumcisions and then call your insurance company and see what the copay is for that. I think for my sons, it was like $110 or something I had to pay out of pocket to, for the, for the, um, pediatrician to do the circumcision so not all circumcision not all pediatricians do circumcision so keep that in mind as you're looking for that care for your baby after you have after you give birth so um that's some quick and dirties on things that you can think about and as you're in preparation getting closer to birth and i will see you all in the next video you take care